a train conductor, a commercial truck driver, an information technology specialist. These and other members of the United States Army Reserve converged in the Middle East and used their civilian skills to help coordinate the military's complex mission of moving thousands of vehicles, military hardware, and other supplies throughout Central Command's area of operations. We have enough diversity within our group as far as uh, backgrounds that we just melt real, real good. Uh, the command has made it very easy for us to try things that we haven't done before and um, without having to worry about getting ourselves in trouble. You know, they know we're going to make mistakes, but that's how we're going to learn. Well, the Army Reserve actually plays a very important role. Both the 840th Transportation Battalion and the 595th Transportation Brigade are active duty elements. But they are augmented by about 80% reservists, which is a very unique situation for the Army today. What our team does here, we do both import and export of any cargo coming into this port that is going to or from theater. That is our actual mission. Our mission here is a little bit different than in some of the other locations because um, sometimes we get to deal with sensitive cargo, which means we really have to have hands-on visibility for this stuff at all times. At this particular port, we are in charge of all the uh, movement of military cargo that's directed to our location. Our main focus is to making sure all this cargo has its proper documentation since we are the last persons to see this cargo. So it'll be an easy transition for this cargo to move via air to its final destination or via vessel to back to the States. So when it arrives here on C-17s, we'll inventory it, mark the cargo, and start keeping an eye on it until it's loaded onto the convoys, sent down to the port, and sent out to sea. We move all kinds of vehicles. We got MRAPs, MATVs, wreckers, PLSs. We also have trailers like flatbeds and lowboys, as well as containers, tricons, quadcons, bicons, 20-footers, and 40-footers. Since our unit took over, we roughly have moved 4,500 pieces of military cargo, as well as the loading and unloading of 60 different vessels. It used to take anywhere between 26 to 56 days to get permission to move cargo. Now we can do it as either soon as it lands off the C-17 or as soon as we bring it off the vessels. Mainly on this particular vessel, on the import portion of it, we're importing mainly containers. Uh, we do have some wheeled vehicles that are coming off. Being good stewards of the government's money has been very important to us. Underneath our new contract, we have found ways to reduce our costs by about two-thirds here, while at the same time increasing our input by about 50%, from 3,000 pieces to over 5,000 pieces for our group. The disadvantage is that when we do have long vessel ops loading as many as six or 700 pieces, we do perform 24-7 operations here, which puts a lot of wear and tear on the soldiers. But as dedicated as they are for the few days that the operations go on, they hang tough. The amount of people and uh, organizations that we deal with on a daily basis is immense. But the key to success is having a good relationship with these people and, and organizations, which becomes in a synchronized movement of information that affects the cargo, so this cargo can move freely to its final destination. From the 143rd Sustainment Command Expeditionary, I'm Army Sergeant John Carkey, Southwest Asia.